Now in the scanner, what you're going to do is to wear... To demonstrate, he put me into this very powerful fMRI brain scanner that can peer into the brain while it's working. And he gave me some goggles so he could show me pictures when I was in there. So you can see here the eyeball of Robert. And once he had a good view into my brain... Nice looking brain. Thank you. Robert, you're not supposed to talk when we scan you, all right? Sorry. Then he said, okay, I'm going to show you a bunch of faces. And for each face, I want you to imitate it. So I did that. Then he recorded my brain while I moved my facial muscles. We're going to do right away another one. Okay. Then he said, okay, same faces, but this time, don't move a muscle. Just look. So I looked. When we checked the results... Oh, there's my brain. I've never seen my brain before. This is your mirror right now. Jacoboni says that the part of my brain that's working when I make a face, the same part gets busy when I see the face. Plus, when I was looking at these faces, I remember feeling extra uncomfortable, kind of bad. But when these faces came on, I felt, I don't know, I felt better, almost happy. And in fact, at the moment I was looking at the happy face, my brain, and this is my brain, in that instant, see the red area here? It shows activity in the happy, emotional part of my brain. And when I was imitating happy faces, look, I get even a bigger response. This, says Jacoboni, is a consistent result. Mirror neurons, he believes, can send messages to the limbic or emotional system in our brains. So it's possible these neurons help us tune in to each other's feelings. That's empathy. We strongly believe that that's a unifying mechanism that allows people to actually connect at a very simple level. You're saying that there's a place in my brain which, whose job it is to live in other people's minds, live in other people's bodies. That's right. Oh, darling, I'm going to die. Don't let me die. Yeah. And great actors instinctively know that if they put feeling and drama into their bodies... Hold me tight. Don't let me go. ...their faces... It's dark out there and ...we will respond. You can't die. You're too brave to die. What actors are expert in is using their movements to inspire feelings in the people watching. These are the experts in the mirror system. We are intensely social creatures. We literally read other people's minds. I don't mean anything psychic like telepathy, but you can adopt another person's point of view. When you put it together, what do you think it's going to be? So if mirror neurons help us connect Great. emotionally, what about people who have trouble with this? Kids like Christian who has autism. Why do you like Legos? It's been known for some time that children with autism could be quite intelligent, but have a profound deficit in social interaction. There he is. Christian can speak and read and write, but like many kids with autism, he will avoid eye contact. He often misunderstands questions. So Christian, can you tell me what you did in school today? Doing well. You're doing well? Everybody wants to know what exactly causes this. So Dr. Ramachandran and his graduate student, Lindsay Schenk, designed an experiment. So we're going to be reading your brain waves with this cap. They recorded brain waves while the kids opened and closed their hands, and while they looked at a movie of somebody else's hands. For most people, the brain waves look the same either way, whether they're doing or seeing. But for kids with autism, the wave changes, suggesting possibly that autism may have something to do with broken mirror neurons. Their brains may indeed be different in that regard, and they may have deficits in the mirror neuron system. But we don't know this for sure yet, and there needs to be additional work needs to be done using brain imaging. But what we do know, says Ramachandran, is that healthy human beings are intensely social. More than our cousins the monkeys, we invent ways to connect. We invent dances, and handshakes, and games to play. We eat together, we meet, and we talk. We talk a lot.
everybody is interested in this question. What makes humans unique? What makes us different from the great apes, for example? You can say humor, you are the laughing biped. <laughs> Language, certainly. Okay? But another thing is culture. And a lot of culture comes from imitation. Watching your teachers do something. And here, V.S. Ramachandran makes a big leap. He has proposed that at a key moment in our evolution, this is his guess, our mirror neurons got better. And that made all the difference, he says, because once we humans got better at learning from each other, looking, copying, teaching, we could do things the other creatures couldn't. In other words, if you are a bear and suddenly you are, the environment turns cold, you need a few million years to develop a polar bear type layers of fat and fur. It would take many, many, many bear generations to select for furrier bears. But, says Ramachandran, if you're a human, you watch your father slaying another bear and putting on a fur coat, you know, skinning it, using that as a coat. You watch it, you learn it instantly. Your mirror neurons start firing away in your brain. And you perform the same sequence, complicated sequence. Instead of going through millions of years of evolution, you've done it in one generation. And while no one's claiming that mirror neurons are the key ingredient that makes us different from other creatures, what these neurons do suggest about us seems almost self-evident. You can see it any Sunday at a sports bar. That deep in our architecture, down in our cells, we are built to be together. There would be very little point in having a mirror system if you lived on your own. There would be a lot of point in having a digestive system if you lived on your own. There would be a good point in having a movement system if you lived on your own. There would be a good point in having a visual system if you lived on your own. But there would be no point in having a mirror system. The mirror system is the most basic social brain system. It's a brain system which there's no point in having if you don't want to interact or relate to other people. But we do like to interact, and maybe now, as never before, we will understand why.